So let me uh, move on perhaps to the next topic from the price stability to financial stability, which is also a major concern, I guess, for you and the Fed more generally. There's also this concept out there of financial dominance. So if the financial sector, of course, it's, it's very sound at this point, but there might be over leveraging going on also on the corporate side. Do you see that you know, there's some threat from the financial instability, which might limit what monetary policy you, you can undertake at some point down the road? And do you think the macro potential tools the US has are sufficient to avoid such a financial dominance circumstances? And finally, uh, one of your bond purchasing programs, which helps very much the corporate sector to come over the crisis, uh, some corporations might use it to level up and pay out dividends, higher dividends, or buy back shares. Is there any ways a modification that you say or only participate, only firms which issue bonds and that don't pay dividends or higher dividends than before can be part of this bond purchasing program? So is, is there any any tools like potential tools you can invent or is there other tools compared to other countries you would like to have um, compared to other countries? You know, so I would say we, we don't feel any pressure from financial dominance. So we'll talk about fiscal dominance, I suppose, in a, in a moment. But if financial dominance is the, the reluctance of uh, or even inability of the central bank to tighten policy because of the leverage in the private sector, we, we, simply, we don't feel that. We, you know, our, our, uh, our corporate sector, our non-financial corporate sector did go into this uh, downturn with uh, relatively high leverage, but at these low interest rates, the, 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 you know, the interest payments are actually not at, at a terribly high level um, by historical standards. They're sort of at a normal level. Uh, we have not seen a, uh, the big uptick in defaults that we thought we might see in non-financial corporates. We really haven't seen it. So um, it's, it's just not something we are feeling or have ever felt really. We, 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 we will, um, when the time comes to raise interest rates, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly do that. And that time, by the way, is, is no time soon. Um, you ask about, <clears throat> about um, macro prude tools. So the difference in the United States, between the United States and other countries, I would say is that we do not have uh, a lot of time varying tools that are where we, where we can see a particular situation and go in after that situation. And the history of those, we've had them over history, and it, it hasn't been a good history. That It's very difficult uh, uh, to get the timing right and that sort of thing. What we do have is strong through the cycle tools. So the idea is we're not going to rely on our ability to put these things in effect at the right time and in the right proportion we don't think we're very good at that. We think we think it's better to, you know, uh, as uh, one of our mutual friends and colleagues uh, likes to say, better to build strong levees than try to predict hurricanes. So what we've done is we, particularly in good times, we run these very strong stress tests that require banks to be resilient against the kinds of massive stresses that can suddenly appear in the global financial crisis, in, in, the, in the aftermath of the arrival of the pandemic. And um, I think that's the right way to do it. And those are always on, good times and bad. You want to be building the strength of the financial system during good times and holding on to those gains. And that, that's really how we look at it. We're not really seeking the other kinds of tools. Uh, there, other countries have a different political economy. And that's the way we, we're doing it. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I think that way works. I think if you look at the performance of the U.S. banking system, certainly, and, and many aspects of the non-banking financial sector, which, which we can talk about, um, they performed fairly well so far during this, this episode. Um, you, you mentioned <clears throat> the bond purchase program. So we had a primary uh, facility, and it's, it closed on December 31, but where we were willing to lend money directly to companies. And then we had really as a way to get a, get a grip on financial conditions in the non-financial corporate market, at the height of the crisis at the, during the really acute period was we, a secondary market one where we would buy very, very small amounts of bonds for um, uh, issued by, you know, like 800 different issuers. And the idea was we, we wanted to be able to, if, if conditions started to fall apart, get in there and have a strong effect. We didn't extend any new credit to any corporate in, in either program. We didn't make a single loan, as you probably know, in the, in the primary one. And you know we're just buying a handful of, of loose bonds in the market for 800 different issuers. So we weren't really in a position to 
demand that anybody do anything. Uh, the other thing, though, I would say is um, that's a decision for Congress. You know, we, we really shy away from anything to do with credit allocation. And there, there are all sorts of sort of social benefit and cost judgments that can be embedded in the kinds of factors. Those are great judgments. They're important judgments, but we're really not comfortable making them at the Federal Reserve. You know, we, we don't want to get into credit allocation based on a, a lot of different factors. Those, that's what, you know, elected people are elected to do. They provide, there are all sorts of places in the federal government where they're providing credit to important uh, constituencies and industries at attractive rates, and that's the job of, of elected.